Hey there, welcome to One Take, powered by backers. No, 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 no judging. Yeah. No judging. The millennials are really changing that. That is charm. No. <laughs> All success begins with desire. I feel like I'm on fire right now. Hey there, welcome to One Take, powered by backers. I am Justin Fox, joined here by Kim Addis. Kim, thank you very much for joining me. Did I get it right? I know I asked off air I, about the last name. Did I get you it right? You got it perfectly, perfectly right. So I'm giving okay. you a thumbs up. All Way right. to go. All right. All right. All right. It's it's sort of, yeah, anyways, we won't belabor it. But um, thank you very much for joining me on the show. Um, I'm thrilled to be here. Awesome. Awesome. So you are, where are you based out of? You're in- I'm in Toronto. You're in Toronto. Toronto okay. Canada. Yeah. Toronto, Canada. I am in Toronto, Canada as well. Oh, um, fantastic. There you go. So we'll do a quick little bio. So you are- the president and founder of Frame of Mind Coaching um, and Journal Engine Software. So where where should we? I'm gonna I, I do a choose your own adventure. I'm gonna <laughs> say one, and then we can kind of we can kind of get into it. So go ahead, tell us about uh, tell us about the coaching Frame of Mind Coaching. So I've been coaching for 16 years, um, okay. head offices in Toronto, but I have a team of coaches in Canada and the US. Okay. And we coach leaders, we like to call them the highly driven population. Okay. And those people tend to have a few commonalities. And number one is that they have large goals that they want to achieve. Number okay. two is that I wasn't sure where you're going with the commonalities, because I was just say they're all a little bit Anyways, but yeah, they have large Go goals. For it. They're yeah. all a little bit what? Um, maybe a little bit off the rocker at times. <laughs> I'll say it a little differently. Okay, yes. So they have large goals they want to achieve. They're right. all good people who want to make a positive difference in the world. Right. They're people who like the finer things in life. Right. You know, okay. good bottle of wine, travel, nice house, nice car. They want to make lots of money. And they have something that frustrates the living daylights out of them. Right. And it could okay. be something like, I don't understand why things are taking so long, why things are so hard and putting my heart and soul into it. Why don't other people get it? Why, you know, why am I working so hard and not making the progress I want to make? Why don't people understand? Why aren't people on board? Why am I not making the sale? Why am I not getting the investor? Why? They have the why question. Can I ask the question? Do you yeah. know the answer or is there an answer? Yeah, for sure. For sure. Of course okay. I know the answer. So in all cases, a hundred percent of cases, okay. our lives, everything in our lives, everything we see here, smell, taste, and touch, okay. every single experience is a reflection of how we think and what we believe to be true. And so if we don't like the experiences we're having, if we don't like the results we're getting, what we want to do is take control over that which we have control, which is the way we think, the way we feel, and the way we behave. And very often, people aren't aware, in almost 100% of cases, people aren't aware of the relationship between their thinking and their outcomes, the results they're getting. Okay. And so they just thrash about, they stay in this state of struggle with no conscious awareness that they are the primary creators of that struggle because of the way they're thinking or because of their mindset because because of because the way of, they think and how their thinking leads them to taking actions action, right. that are often diametrically opposed to their goals and desires right interesting you want me yeah. to give you an example yeah yeah of course examples i can give you stories. lots of examples yeah Give us your best example. Give us I'll your give best you, example. I'll give you lots of examples. Let's okay, start okay. with one and then right, we'll maybe okay. do two and three. Okay. But let's start with one. So I was coaching this guy years ago. He owned a sizable accounting firm. Okay. And I asked him a question at the beginning of coaching. I said, what is your single most important priority? He said, hands down, it's my relationship with my wife. It's really important that we're on the same page, that we're aligned, that we spend quality time together. We make decisions together, that we are united. And this relationship is more important than anything else. It's more important than my business. It's more important than my friendships. It's more important even than my relationship with my kids. It's very important that my wife and I are together. And so when I coach leaders, I ask them to journal in an online journal on a daily basis. Okay. And so a few weeks into our coaching, 
he started to journal. He said, I just got into a massive fight with my wife. I, said, so I was going to make a joke earlier, but I kind of held off. I, I'm, I, I love cracking jokes. It's supposed to be sort of light, lighthearted, but do, I'm just going to say I, this. I'm just maybe from a perspective. Do you think he really, was that really his desire? Was that relationship? I believe that that this? was, yeah. I believe that that was his At number one priority. Was it? Okay. Interesting. But then he talks about the fact that he got into a fight with his wife and what was the fight about? It was about his son who isn't particularly academically oriented and likes right. to skip school Okay. and approached his so parents, teenage boy. <laughs> approached his parents saying, I want to go to this all night party. Will you let me go? And he said, absolutely not. You're barely showing up to school on time on a daily basis. Right. This is not happening. And separately, he asked the mother who said, sure, you can go. <laughs> he lost it, completely lost it and got so mad that he decided to sleep in the other room. So okay. now does sleeping in the other room achieve his number one priority? Right. Okay. No, right? Obviously, no, obviously not. Obviously I mean, sort not. Of the, don't go to bed. Don't go to sleep angry, right? Or, well, or... okay, but that's that's a strategy, that's right. a tactic. But the thing is that he lost sight of his number one priority right. because he decided that in this case it was much more important to, to, to stick up for his principles or whatever. Right, to be right. To be right, yeah. Right. And so he lost track of what it was that mattered to him. And we lose track all the time. And so we end up behaving in ways that take us far away from our priorities and goals right and we it's do interesting. that it's such like a, right it's sort of like a very simple story i mean parents disagreeing over the discipline of a child you know i don't i you know and then i, I maybe he took the extreme to kind of sleep in another bed or you know that have the the argument um so what what's the solution there to Someone well, the like solution that. is to help him remember what his priorities are and help him understand that what happened was that his thinking took him away from his priorities and right. his beliefs were like, you know, my vision, my, my need to be right superseded my deepest desires for connection and unity with my wife. And we often betray ourselves. We often do things that take us far away from that which we really want That's but we don't really, do it consciously right it's sort of an it, yeah i was just gonna say like subconsciously you're you're you know what what's the term um sabotaging yourself. sabotage that's the word Sa self-consciously you're sabotaging yourself so i mean how do you so this is probably obviously i mean i'm sure you have other stories but how does somebody go about um like is, is it re yeah correcting is like recognizing it and then obviously kind of you know like anything well, right admitting admitting you have a problem or admitting yeah. well, there's an so, issue or you know right. figuring it out and you know being conscious so about it we all every single one of us comes to the table with a set of beliefs those beliefs right. may come from our upbringing our family our parents our siblings our friends then the media it, it comes from school teachers etc we come to the table with a set of beliefs and those beliefs guide our behaviors. And a lot of times the beliefs we have are actually completely unaligned with our goals. And so my job as a coach is to help bring awareness to a person of what right. their beliefs are. And so my job is to ask a whole bunch of questions and create a format or a process where those beliefs come to surface so that I could say, hey, is this your belief? And you say, yes. And then I say, is this what you actually want? You say, well, maybe not so much. And you're like, whoa. So they I've, don't align with one another. Right. I've been holding on to this belief for years and years and years. In fact, sometimes some people hold on to their beliefs for dear life. And for the first time, I see that this belief is actually causing me a great deal of pain and suffering and struggle. And it's not allowing me to easily get to where I want to go whether it's a great relationship, increased revenues, hiring the right people, uh, selling whatever it is to a client, it's holding me back. It's wow. holding me hostage. Interesting. Do you want to play a game? Do you want to, do you want to try that? I out? love games. Sure. Yeah. Do you want here? We can do a, do pretend I'm, well, I am uh, an okay, entrepreneur who's, who's, yeah, go, go ahead. Let's, let's do a, 
that question based sort of um okay guess, so i'm gonna ask you a question yeah, okay. what in your life is something that creates struggle pain frustration for you or something that you'd really like to see different and if you don't mind i'll take some notes <laughs> It's going to be recorded. So yeah, um, no problem. What, what was the question? Something that that what is something in your life that's causing you pain, frustration or struggle, or something where you want to see it differently than it is like you're like, man, I wish this was different. I mean, I, I surface, I mean, obviously, as an entrepreneur, you know, I, I, I it's not pain or, or whatever. I mean, it is a struggle. There's definitely, you know, the daily grind. I enjoy it you know, um, okay, I, I think at times finances, you know, uh, you know, throughout my life, I've, I've dealt with, um, you know, I've had, had some failures where, you know, I've, uh, I've, uh, you know, unfortunately lost or, or been part of, um, you know, I had a business that went under basically. Right. So I lost, lost, uh, you know, some significant money finances and, you know, probably a little bit, of you know, people around me. I think one thing, this is, I don't know if I can air this episode if we get too, too deep into it, but, um, okay. So no, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I won't allow it'll, you to go any deeper, it, but let me just say this, like, look what happened yeah. in the air. We're like up here, right? We're talking, we're animated. And suddenly when you need to expose yourself, what happened? You got nervous. You got quiet. I was trying to think about right. No, but but think about it. You got. I've made mistakes, lots of so them. So what? Who Let's hasn't? Who hasn't yeah. made mistakes? Everyone's. Yeah. Made. But what happened in this episode right here, right now? Yeah. Energy shifted, and you're like, "Wow, I'm getting uncomfortable. I don't know if I can even air this." It's like in my own skin, right? Right. Yeah. And why did you get uncomfortable? That's starting to think past. about things, right? Starting right. to think about different sort of like, you know, issues that you know I've, I've been through. I've you know I lived a. In my twenties, I was probably that kid asking to go. I well, I'll put it this way: I didn't ask, and I went to those all-nighters, and you know, probably was a <laughs> bane of my parents' existence, right? Um, and partook in other other illicit activities. So um, I've definitely had struggles in my life, um, you know. But at this point, you know, I have family and friends, and you know sort of moved on to some extent. And I do have great ambition, um, but that's why I was joking at the beginning. So all those people that have the ambition, I joke that they're a little crazy because you have to be a little crazy to think that you can actually kind of okay, so change let, the let, world, right? Let's, but, just, let's just slow down and pull this apart yes, if you don't yes, mind. For sorry, a brief you're the, you're the, okay, you're so, the uh, counselor, so, if you will, yes, or the coach, coach, coach. coach so, sorry. so again, for those of you who are listening, notice that the energy changed in the room. Why did the energy change? Because inside of Justin, whether he's aware of it or not, he has a set of beliefs or a story that he tells about his history, his experiences, and his failures. And what that means about him. And he's like, wow, I'm not sure that I am <laughs> comfortable expressing it. Right. Because it must mean something about me. Right. And, and what you've done is you've made up a story. You've invented it. And when you say I've gotten past it more or less, that piece is important. It's the more or less part. Yes, you've gotten past it, but clearly not completely clearly not completely why otherwise you'd say yeah i'm happy to share no big deal i'm way past it shit happens sorry right it's, but that's yeah, but that's not what's there. happening that is not what's happening what's happening is you're getting tense and when you get tense it's an indicator that you have a bunch of beliefs about yourself that are not lined up with where you want to be going it's very clear everybody can hear it see it and experience it right here on this podcast. Okay. Yes. So, yeah. Okay. So, so, so what does that mean? It means we have to actually make sure you're past it because you're struggling when you're like, when you say, yeah, the grind, I enjoy it. But if you enjoy it, you wouldn't call it a grind. <laughs> right. right. I think, I think, okay. So I'm, I'll just say, I think that word, I maybe use it in the sense that a lot of people use it. So they understand, like, I enjoy what I do, right? I actually, I mean, I'm, I'm at home. I, I love spending time with family, 
and friends, my kids, my wife, um, you know, but I also do enjoy building, you know, something. Someone sure. asked me sort of a, a couple, you know, maybe a month or so ago on some a, a similar sort of conversation around, um, you know, what, 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 what did I want to accomplish or like, what do I enjoy? And I, I think my answer was building, right? Like building, creating sort of things and, and kind of aspiring to, to kind of go against the norm. Sure. Right? So, so are you a highly driven individual? Are you the guy that fits the, the criteria? Yes, you're oozing it. And it's also to me, maybe not to everybody clear that you're after something you want right. something. You you're like kind, of, kind of chasing, right? You're, yeah, it feels like you're chasing. Exactly. Yeah. And so yeah. you want to be somewhere that you're not quite yet. And in that gap, there's some kind of a friction, some kind of a tension, some kind of a struggle. Unease, and the struggle yeah. is a reflection of some of the beliefs you have about yourself, about your history, about your experiences, about who you are in the world. And that's something we would have to dig into deeper. But those things are kind of making things go slower. They're reducing your speed so let's let's actually dig in that i'm 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 interested i'm i'm fine i'm i'm pretty open most okay. people who know me you know and if you don't know me too bad you'll you'll find out so let's this that's this is good i think it's interesting so you mentioned the the sort of delving into the that divide like what what is I mean, there's no magic pill kind of like that just so magically you're asking erases me how, how yeah, does what's, it. How, how, what's yeah, the how, process? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. How do you go about so kind when of- I, When I coach people, again, yeah. I ask them to journal in an online journal and we're doing it for 10 weeks straight, every single day. Every single day that you journal or you're telling about yourself. And does that story allow you to easily achieve your goals or does that story actually hinder you? And 100% of the time, people have stories that get in their way. And my job is to, through the journaling and the dialogue is to bring forward those stories and say, hey, Justin, let's look at this one thing that keeps you trapped. So is it changing the story? Thing. Is it like changing the story well, or changing it's, how it's you- assigning different meaning to the story. And it's taking the story and leveraging it instead of having it hold you like hostage, like a noose around your neck, right? So let's for a minute, step back. Those people that are super successful in life have a very high degree of emotional resilience. Right. So what is emotional resilience? Re emotional resilience is the ability to bounce back from adversity with speed and agility. And this, and is very important and leverage the adversity somehow. Okay. So it's not just, okay, I got back up and I keep on going. It's I got back up and I did something with my negative experience. I turned it into a strategic advantage somehow. In order for me to be able to do that, I must interpret my experience as not so horrible, terrible, and awful. Right. And I must assign a different meaning to that experience than I had in the past. So if I run a business and it goes under, there's a story I tell. Okay, so I, I've had negative experiences. Uh, you know, one of my experiences as I ran a business and it, and it came to a point where I was ready to sell and I made a stupid decision and how to go about it. And it cost me $300,000 in tax implications. Stupid right. mistake. Right. When I Sorry to laugh. Is that was a real story. I didn't mean to Real laugh, story. But, Doesn't matter. Yeah, it's yeah. in the past. I don't I, I, yeah, I can me. imagine exactly right? what you're talking about. Right. But yes. So, but but what can what story can I tell about that negative experience? I could tell the story of I was stupid, I was inexperienced, I was taken advantage of, I was naive, I wasn't right. wise enough, I didn't have enough education, I should have known better. What is that doing? It's beating myself up, right? Right. So if I'm beating myself up, and we could say rightly so, does, does a beaten person succeed in the next endeavor? Impossible. Impossible. So, so it's sort of like, I mean, I use the, the quote, uh, mistakes made, lessons learned, moving on, right? I don't know if that... But it's a more than just moving on. It's right. mistakes made, lessons learned, let's do something with the lesson. Let's the turn it into an advantage. Interesting. So actually like taking the lessons and consciously 
kind applying of you, applying them right. as an advantage going forward. So not just learning them, but actually putting that lesson into use. Exactly. So how do I put it into use? I coach entrepreneurs, executives, leaders, and I take my history, my background, my experiences and leverage them in coaching. Right. I have greater insight. My experience comes in handy for someone who doesn't have that experience. How do you get into coaching? Just out of curiosity. How did I get into coaching? <laughs> yeah, how, how does anybody, but how, yeah, I guess let's go to that story. How yeah. do you, how did, before, I don't, not to detract from my sullen face, kind of like just thinking through my head, I'm going to have to start applying what you just said, because I, I, I really see what you're saying. Um, we'll get back to that, but how do you get into coaching? How did I get into coaching? So I'm, yeah. you could say a, um, what do you call them? A serial entrepreneur. Okay. So before this company, I used to own another company and we used to build simulation based assessments. And the purpose of those assessments was to help companies make better hiring decisions. Okay. And I ended up selling my shares. And when I got out of that business, I was recruited locally by a coaching company. And I thought, oh my God, this is going to be amazing because their mandate was to help people live extraordinary lives. And I okay. thought that is completely aligned with right. everything about me. Right. Every ounce of my being wants that. But I lasted eight and a half months. That wasn't, that wasn't, their, their vision wasn't really what they, how they lived it. They didn't well, live their truth. I, or? I am not good at working for other people because I have okay. a lot of strong ideas, as you can tell. Right. And I'm just not designed. I'm not employable, you could say, right? I have to run my own company. That's probably, that's probably one of my deep underlying. <laughs> I'm not employable. I said right. it there live on, on, uh, on air. I'm not employable. <laughs> right. I'm hireable, but not employable. Those yeah, are two that's actually, I'm things. really good at interviews. There you um, go. I'm, and exit interviews too. Um, so, so I went to work for that company and I observed how they coach. Okay. And I thought to myself, I think they're doing it wrong. Right. I think they're making a massive mistake and they're missing the boat in their coaching process. And I think I could do a better job. So how did they coach? They were coaching, um, individuals and they said, okay, we're going to help you build a business plan. And in order for you to reach your goals, we're going to break that plan down into smaller manageable components. And the coach's job was to hold their clients accountable to getting all the things done. Sounds reasonable. Sort right? of makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Sort of makes sense. But in my mind, I'm like, people can make their own plans and they know what they're supposed to do, but they're not doing it. Why not? What's holding them back? Like, if you want to lose weight, we know how to lose weight. Why don't people do what they're supposed to do? Yes, yeah, I, I, this actually is probably about the third time someone's brought that analogy up. I mean, yeah, right. I, I don't know. Why don't people? Why? Because something holds them back and it has to do with their beliefs and their thinking. And if we could identify what's holding them back and move that out of the way, then we could set them up for serious success. Right. But then my job isn't to hold people accountable. It's not to babysit them. That's not my job. My job is to help them soar by taking the garbage that's in their head and removing it. So, okay, let, let's, let's just reverse there for a second. What you just said, so ever, I mean, I would have said the accountability aspect is kind of like the bread and butter of anyone trying to help anyone do anything anywhere across the board, right? Can I it's just like, tell you? So what did you just say that? Go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, let me tell you, accountability in coaching right. is unethical at best and okay. detrimental at worst. Okay. So you just gave the, what's the, what's the solution then? You, you kind of let me explain. Out. Let me explain. Yeah. Let's just talk about accountability in yeah. coaching. Right. So if let's say I'm coaching you and I hold you accountable and it works. So now okay. what happens? You're achieving your goals, but it's because I'm holding you accountable. So what have I created? I've created a system. Exactly. Is that ethical? Not ethical. My job is to create independence. The ask pharmacology companies about dependencies. Uh, just, we okay. don't want to go down that road. But yeah. Right. But Joke. not ethical. Yes. Now, let's say you hire me and I hold you accountable and you still don't do the things that you need to do. How do you feel now about yourself? Uh, Worse. That, that I wasn't even able to do it when somebody was holding my hand kind of thing. Right. You feel worse. So now right. I've taken your situation 
and exacerbated it. I've made it worse. So for me, that's detrimental. So in coaching, the accountability model is misplaced. Crazy, right? Right. Everything you've always thought about coaching is suddenly like up overturned. You're like, so, who is so this girl? My, <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. I, I, you're definitely, um, this is probably the most I've thought on one of these shows. This is about episode 85 and definitely making me like sort of like think a little bit different. So yeah, you've got, you stumbled me here for a second. So what is, what is the, what is the answer? What's the antithesis? Not, yeah, what's the antithesis of accountability? The, like what the, actually works? So what works is like when you're beating yourself up for not achieving your goals, right? what, again, we, we talked about it a minute ago, a beaten person can't reach their goals. Okay. So my job is to undo the self beating you're doing. It's not to add to your beating. It's not. So it's to find the ways that you're sabotaging yourself, you're hurting yourself, you're slowing yourself down. It's to find the beliefs that you have that are standing in the way of your success, the self-doubt, the um, feelings of unease, inexperience, you know, inability. Sort of like the imposter syndrome. It, it's a lot more than that, but that's a great example. Right. And shine a light on that and challenge it. So that all that crap is gone and you feel calm, relaxed, able to move forward. You're not beating yourself up. You're confident, you're secure, you're clear. And if you fail, it's not the end of the world. Right. Which I think a lot of people are, are obviously afraid of failing, right? right? That's a major. Right. Kind you of know why you're, it's not the end of the world? Because now you're emotionally resilient and you're able to take that failure and leverage it. Right. And learn from it and actually right? apply the learnings. Exactly. To a benefit. Exactly. So my job is to help you build a muscle, a strength that allows you to experience things without pain. Okay. I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to think of like, I've got a couple of thoughts. So I don't want to get into me anymore. <laughs> we can talk about maybe that later. Another, another time, another time on another call, maybe not recorded. Um, so, so how does someone like? What's kind of like a, a maybe an actionable way? Like, are there are there? Example. Is it meditation or like? Am I gonna start? So I ask my clients to self, journal. Yeah. Okay. The journaling right? part. Yeah. Why do I ask them to journal? Because when people journal, they're telling their stories, and in those stories exist the beliefs they have. Right. Okay. So how does it work? The beliefs you have impact the behaviors you do and don't do, and therefore the results. So if I believe that my efforts are not going to yield results, like it's useless, what's the point? Right. How hard am I going to try? Not very hard. Very hard. Right. If I believe like no matter what I do, I'm going to fail. I'm not even going to put in any effort. Right? So, so how I do everything is a reflection of my beliefs. So the journaling allows me to see beliefs. And the coaching calls allows me to address beliefs. So the journaling component, and every time you journal, I, your coach would read and respond to the journals by asking more questions, by going deeper, by connecting dots, by getting to the heart of matters. So it's a very intense, intimate experience designed to create results fast. Why? Because people like you want speed. You don't have patience. You need to move fast. Yeah. No, it's, it's yeah, interesting. So, so it's, it sounds very intimate, obviously, like, so, and you mentioned sort of, so the average person or most people, um, are they, does everyone have the same kind of ambition, just in different maybe levels or aspects, or are you targeting very much towards like a specific type of person? We are looking for highly driven individuals who have the desire for more and they don't know how to get there. It could be, I have the desire for a bigger business. I have the desire for uh, 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 
a smoother family experience. Right. I have the desire for greater health. I have the desire for more than what is. I have the desire to feel happier because I'm always grumpy and upset and right. frustrated. I have the desire for something else. Interesting. And so, I mean, not to whatever, like how, how often do you see people get success in, in this type of coaching? Like significant number, large number? Uh, uh, so we give, we give uh, surveys to our clients before right. and after and our uh, ratings are 94%. So that's a pretty high, just for those that's in a scale of one to a hundred, that's a very high number. Very high number, especially right. compared to uh, industry standard numbers, which are more like 54%. Because they're going towards the other, the accountability model. Yeah, because or, they're doing their own thing with their own philosophy. Like I can't speak for every single coaching model on the planet, but this process, this philosophy, this methodology, the coaches we have, all of it coming together produces an experience that is just uh, transformational, truly transformational. So I guess my question to you, I mean, it sounds interesting and, and yeah, I'd be open to talk, but um, where did you learn the, this technique or like, what is it just sort of over time you kind of saw Again, I, a, I, an avenue or how to, yeah. to be honest I saw how other people coach and I just felt like there's got to be a better way let me test this new way out let's try this and at the very beginning when I first started coaching I had all kinds of like I was nervous I was insecure too right. and so I put some things in place to address those insecurities one of those things was journaling why? Because I thought I really want every call to be meaningful, to be impactful, to, to make a difference. I didn't want to skim, you know, skimming right. code. I hate that. And so I wanted to make a massive difference. And I thought if I could read the thoughts that are in somebody else's head, then our coaching conversations will really matter. Be, right, right. That much more significant. So when I first started coaching and I implemented journaling, it was just to make me feel more confident. I didn't have any clue what was going to unfold, which is if you journal every day of your life, you're going to make progress. If you journal with a coach, that progress in, is infinitely higher and faster. So it was game changing. And if you journal... I have the information I need to effectively coach you because if I am trying to coach and somebody's not journaling, I'm missing really, really relevant data. And now I'm kind of, it's kind of like if someone tries to journal, uh, start, sorry, if someone tries to coach without the client journaling, it's like walking in a dark room with a blindfold on searching for the lights. When someone's journaling, it's walking into a lit room, seeing where everything is. That right. is the difference interesting analogy so so okay let's so journaling so i mean obviously that sounds like like you said there's sort of a no journaling 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 with a coach um and then obviously the coaching aspect so uh, this journaling it's almost like um you know you get a, a chance to kind of think and sort of take time for yourself and write things down and maybe put you at peace with yourself there might be a sort of a therapeutic component to journaling in and of itself um, where do you go? Like, where does the coaching go from there? Like I, I mentioned meditation, like, is there, is it just almost like the self-talk, the self-belief, like, where do you, where it's a do little you bit, coach? it's, it, or, you know, so there's a blend, right? The, so the, the blend is between extracting what's inside of you and applying right. it to your, to your life practically. Right. So if let's say, for example, you ha do you have children? I do. Two How boys. How old are they? How old are four, they? Four and seven. Perfect. I'll give you an example. Okay. It just came up yesterday. Okay. So one of my kids are older. One of my kids just bought an apartment. Okay. In Toronto. And yesterday we were over at the apartment and we had like a pre-closing date visitation okay. and we brought a handyman to like, just look and see what needed to be done. Right. So we're standing outside the door and the handyman looks at the wall in the hallway and he notices a defect in the wall. Okay. And he, he puts so he's obviously very, very, uh, yeah. He's paying observant, attention, right? Yeah. He's paying attention to everything that's wrong. Right. Okay. So 
That's how he's wired. He's paying attention to everything that's wrong. We start talking about his kids. He says, I have two kids. One is three, one is six. Great. He's like, my six-year-old is an angel. I tell him not to do something and he ne will never do it again. My three-year-old, you tell him not to do something and he keeps doing it. Right. I said, give me an example. He says, well, he has cars and he smashes them into the wall. I have beautiful walls because he's the handyman. Right. And now they're destroyed because of my three-year-old. I tell him, stop smashing your car into the wall. Okay. okay. I, want, I really want to know where this story is going. This I'm is telling you where it's going. Yeah. So stop <laughs> smashing. And, and he just keeps doing it. I'm like, here's what's happening, right? Well, so what are his beliefs? His belief is if I tell my kid not to do something, they should just follow right. my instructions okay but are my kids here just to follow my instructions not so much no. so i said i want to give you a new not strategy. at all actually they're it's probably the opposite they're, right. if they're like you and i they're not they're not employable right exactly <laughs> so i'm going to give you a new strategy instead of telling your child what you don't want right tell them what you do want so put a little pillow on the wall against the wall and say aim here here aim here Instead of don't smash your cars against the wall, right. you say smash your cars against this pillow. Right, so you sort of reframe it a little bit. Right, but the reframe comes from a philosophy or a methodology that says a lot of times we're focused on what we don't want. Right. Instead of what get. we do want. Or what can't we get. What's not well, working, the defects, the things yeah. that are wrong, right. instead of the things that we want. And when we're focused on the things we don't want, the things that are wrong, the things we can't get, it's impossible for us to get what we want. We cannot get there. So we have to use our thinking to turn ourselves towards what we would rather have, right? So we're applying this concept to practical experiences. So he goes back to his family and he's like, let me try that. I never thought of that. Tell my kid what I want instead of what I don't want. Wow. Crazy. <laughs> Where else can I apply uh, did that? You, did you hear? Did you hear? I will hear works? back because okay. he's coming back to do some work at our house. Interesting. But so, I've seen this a million times over. So, so is it? So, what is it called? The law of attraction, right? Or, or I mean, the, it's I, I, more than. So, the but, law of attraction is a little ethereal, right? It's up right. there. It's but this is side. actually taking that into like real world practice, right? It's it's basically saying if you're focused on what you don't want, you get what you don't want. If you're right. focused on what you want, right? There's a much higher likelihood that things will unfold exactly as you would like them to be. And this is more of a practical approach. So there's a practical to element kind of apply, to the yeah. way we coach, right? Right. So some of it is like, let's look at how your beliefs impact your behaviors. Right. So I'll give you another example. I was coaching a gentleman who had stage four cancer. Okay. And when I was introduced to him, I asked him two questions. Question number one, how long do you have left to live? And he okay. said, I'm not sure I'm guessing about two years. I said, okay. Well, Question number two, how can I help you? What is it that you want to achieve as a result of coaching? He said, well, I really, really, really want you to help me in increase my productivity. And I thought that was kind of weird, right? Like if you had two years left to live. I'm, I'm not productivity anything. I'm out, but no. Right. Anyways, okay. that's probably a bad, I take that back. Don't take it that back. Joke, I, wouldn't, yeah. I wouldn't be focused on my productivity either. Yeah. I said, why is that important to you? He said, well, I have an older mom. I want to make sure that I sell my company. I grow my company. I sell my company and I leave her in a good spot. And I really need you to help me make sure that I'm maximizing every day, every hour of every day. I want you to hold me accountable. Right. I want you to make sure that I'm, you know, doing things that matter most and on and on and on. And I said, well, let me ask you a different question. What is it that you really, really want? He said, well, what I really want is more time. And I do want to sell my company and I do want to leave money for my mom. And I do want to buy a house and I do want to be in a great relationship. And you know what else I want? I want to run a marathon. I said, let's do that. Let's work on the things you want. And we started to look at how he ran his business. And here's how he ran his business. Every single project that went out the door, he had to make sure he saw it first to make sure it was done properly. The I's were dotted, the T's were crossed. So what was he doing? He created a bottleneck for himself called him. Right. Right. And I said, well, we should probably talk about hiring people. He said, I can't afford to hire people. That was his belief. 
And in my mind, I'm like, man, you can't afford not to hire people. Your life is at stake. Right. Right. And so yeah, we address that's... that belief. I push back. We looked at his business and saw that, in fact, he could start hiring people. Right. That was six years ago. And he's, he's still, still alive. alive. Interesting. He sold half of his company. He bought a house. He took his mom on two great vacations. He's engaged to be married. He ran a marathon. He's really relatively young then. He's 35. Oh, ran okay. a marathon, a triathlon, and climbed Mount Kilimanjaro. Wow. Just by reframing it, like by positioning sort of, hey, the, the, you know, I want, and then actually, you know, thinking about that and pursuing it. it. It's not just a one thing, right? It's right. the beliefs we have will determine the experiences we have. And so if I'm we're not, in, yeah, Sorry, if we're not ahead, enjoy, ahead. if we're not enjoying our experiences, we need to look at the beliefs we have and start making some mental changes. That's how it goes. So this, I mean, it applies to everyone across the board, right? Like, I mean, not everyone has ultra high ambitions or, you know, thoughts of changing the world. Um, you know, so, so it probably applies to a lot of people, but you obviously work with people who have sort of the, the ambition. Um, interesting. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna completely flip the, the script. I know you've said the word I haven't counted, but we could go back and get a timer journal or journaling. So your other business is a, uh, what's it called? Journal engine. Yes. So, so I mean, what I get, I get the connection. I get yeah. the connection. I'm assuming it's some sort of digital journaling yeah, platform. Exactly. Yes, app. that's exactly. Yeah. So yeah. journal engine is the piece of software we use for right. our clients to journal, right. but we now license that software out to other coaches, speakers, trainers, organizations who want to um, do learning in internally. Right. With like it's, a journaling type of model. Exactly. So it's designed specifically for coaches to use in a coaching environment. Interesting. It's called Journal Engine. And yeah. you can license it out. It's super affordable, ridiculously affordable. And it's like an amazing tool because for me, it's the it's the centerpiece, the focal of how we coach. Interesting. We actually, I mean, we work with a lot of entrepreneurs. We work with, you know, startups that are going through the backers platform. Um, I think it'd be interesting. I don't know. We could talk about it off air, but um, licensing the journal. I, 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 I'll be very blunt and honest. I've never journaled. Um, I think maybe in my entire life, I've done one thing that some people have commented on. I wrote down at times in my life when I was really happy about certain things and almost put it away so that knowing that other times when I wasn't, it was sort of like, remember this. So I've done some things like that, but very, very, very infrequently. Um, I think journaling for entrepreneurs, as you said, there's sort of that revealing and then getting someone to kind of coach them along the process with the access to that journal would be would be very helpful from not just like their ambition and maybe their emotional and everything we're talking about the mindset, but just in general about what they're doing on a day to day basis, where their priorities are, you know, from a business, uh, you know, family, friends, relationships, whatever it is, right? Are any thoughts on that? Uh, well, yes, I'm completely biased. And I think <laughs> journaling, say, you'll say yes, yes, 100%. Yeah, journaling is for me, it's a it's a game changer. It really, okay. really is. Because when you journal, it allows you to point yourself in the direction that you want to go. Because what happens is when you're not getting there, it means you're not pointed in the right direction. So how long do you not spend journaling? It depends on the day. It could be five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, a half an hour. It just depends on the day. Interesting. So you're not consciously focused on it. So where can people find it? Like, can you, can, can an individual just kind of go get it? Like, is there a site or, or is it sort of licensed? So it's journalengine.com. You can, okay. you can go, I mean, you know, you want to run just journal on your own or run one course with a bunch of people. It's literally $20 a month. It's Okay. super affordable right uh but so journalengine.com for the journaling platform and frameofmindcoaching.com for coaching okay cool can they get you on like 
LinkedIn, LinkedIn, Twitter, yeah, LinkedIn, the, Twitter, yeah. Facebook, uh, Instagram, all yeah. of the things, YouTube, iTunes, all the things. iTunes. There you well, go. Are I you, have, you a have a podcast? podcast? Oh, okay. I have a podcast. Let me tell you about it. Okay. It's called the Frame of Mind Coaching Podcast, Okay. where I literally coach leaders live on the show. So I typically- We just did it. No, but it, it. better you, though, better though. Way better because yeah. you're usually a willing- Candidate. I was sort of willing. I, I, I actually threw myself into it. I was like, let's do this. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we could, we could, you know what? We could have you on again and do a live coaching session. Okay. So I'll, well, I'll plan what my thought process is. Well, what be. we'll do is yeah. we'll get you to journal in advance. Okay. And then I'll coach you on your podcast. Interesting. Interesting. I'll, I'll have to look into that. And I think, yeah, definitely, you know, um, yeah, the licensing aspect for that to, um, the entrepreneurs that are on our platform, getting them kind of going through the journaling, at least to start, like you said, no journaling, journaling, you know, journaling with coaching, obviously journaling in and of itself is probably, you know, a start, right? So massive. massive. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Um, cool. Well, Kim, I really appreciate you joining me on the show. Um, I have one last question that I ask okay. everyone. Okay. I'll, I'll, well, I've sort of gone two different directions. I'm going to do a choose your own adventure, but I kind of want to hear both your answers. Um, So that's not really a choose your own adventure. That's a choose both adventures, maybe. Okay. Um, So one word, if you could go back and give yourself a piece of advice or someone, you know, kind of coming up, uh, what would that one word be? The other one is, and this I think would be interesting for you to answer too, is um, if you're sort of standing on a ledge or on a cliff and you're about to, you know, perish, if you will, or you're in the eye of a tornado, what would be sort of your last words or kind of um, your last thoughts to your loved ones or to whoever? Okay, wow. So the first question was one word. One word, yeah. That I would give. To say to a younger you. Uh, uh, Relax. Relax? Relax. Relax. Just enjoy. Not so much tension. Yeah, yeah. Just relax. It's all good. It's all good. And that comes from what you've learned throughout your coaching, right? it's all good no need to stress there you go relax relax i like that um and then what would you say what would your last words be relax and no my last words yeah actually i would if i had to turn to my 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 family and i was about to die i'd be like it's all good it's It's all all good good. it's all good everything's good no need to stress no need to worry this is not terrible this is part of the process it's all good perfect awesome well kim really appreciate you joining me um we should talk uh, off air here about some things I, I think it'd be interesting um everyone else this is one take powered by backers and i just got exposed apparently i'm thinking the wrong thoughts um i, I think i'm going somewhere i think i've got some some thoughts and i probably should start journaling but yeah we're you're not probably all, thinking a lot of perfect, right? You're all, you're probably thinking a lot of exactly perfect thoughts, but we're just not aware because we're human beings. Of right. Some of the thoughts that we have that slow us down. They kind of get. That's all. That's yeah. all. We all have it. I have it. You have it. I've never encountered a human being who doesn't have it. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Thank you well, so much. Awesome. Yeah. It's been thank so much thank fun. you, Kim. Appreciate okay. it. Everyone else, see you again tomorrow. Hey there. Welcome to One Take. Powered by backers. No, 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 no judging. Yeah. No judging. The millennials are really changing that. That uh, is charm. No. <laughs> All success begins with desire. I feel like I'm on fire right now.